Racing Hotline, the driver of the number 38 Long John Silver's Ford for Front Row Motorsports. David Gilliland joins us. Hey, David, how are you tonight? I'm doing well. Well, very good. How about you guys? Hey, we're doing terrific. Uh, Charlie and I were just kind of talking before we went to the commercial there uh, about Bristol, and you got off to a great start at Bristol, and then all of a sudden, as, as these things tend to go at Bristol, it kind of went south in a hurry. Kind of tell me the, the deal about that, uh, the good start, and then what happened. Yeah, you know, Bristol's been a great track for me, and, um, you know, I really enjoy going there. And, um, you know, the weekend started off well. We were really good in practice. Um, in every single practice, we were really good and um, qualified well. And, um, you know, just got off to a good start. We were running there in, I think, top 15 or so. And, um, you know, just kind of just saving our stuff because it is Bristol, and, and there's 500 laps of Bristol. you got to complete to have a great day. So, um, you know, we are just kind of riding, biding our time, and, Ended up uh, blowing a right front tire, so, um, you know, we were in the shop. I just, just got back to my house here a couple minutes ago. Uh, we were meeting about it and trying to figure out what we're going to do to try and try and help it. So uh, it seems like the feeds of these tires are, are not quite as um, strong as, as they have been in the past. The, the tire's a little bit different, and, um, you know, you saw a lot of teams. You saw Jeff Gordon and... And Jimmy Johnson, a lot of the uh, you know Hendrick Motorsports that, that obviously don't have those type of problems, you know having having some issues as well. So uh, we weren't the only ones, but made it for a long day for sure. You know it's uh, disappointing riding around there with a damaged race car after being in the wall, but uh, we were able to salvage a 24th place finish, and and, and all in all, that uh, could have been a lot worse. You know, when you hit the wall like that, then you have to run around, like you say, with a damaged race car. How disheartening is that? Because you, you know that, you had, like you said, you had a good car. You were up in 15th spot, and everything was going well. And then just to have to kind of ride around there, you ended up four laps down. That's not, you know, bad considering everything that happened. But, uh, you know, what? how do you kind of change your mindset from going to, hey, I want to try and win this thing to I just need to survive to the end? Yeah, it's a difficult uh, it's a difficult thing to, to to have to deal with throughout a race for sure. You know, we uh, we felt like we had a car definitely capable of a top ten very easily, and uh, you know that was our goal. And and uh, you know once the tire blew, we hit the wall. It actually bent the front clip and bent the right front lower control arm, bent some of the splitter braces down, and hitting the racetrack. And you know at that point, you know we just you just got to shift gears and then say, hey, look, you know we got. In 300 and some laps to go, and and our main focus is to to finish these races and and you know gain some points and build on that. So, uh, you know, it's not easy, but at, at the time, it's, it's all you got to do. And then we were able to do it. And my crew chief Frank Curry, he, he did really good. He he kept his composure throughout uh, throughout the incident and everything else. And even when I got a little wound up, you know, he uh, he kept <laughs> calm and, and really just reminded me that hey, you know, our, our big picture is we got to we got to get out of there and, and, and uh, finish the race and figure out what happened, how we can not have it happen again, and then go on and build from it. You get wound up? I can't believe that. You seem like such a level-headed person all the time. You, you get wound up inside the car? Oh, absolutely. Especially <laughs> a place like Bristol. You know, all these places, you know. But Bristol, I mean, heck, you know, in qualifying, it was a couple cars. We, I wanted to get in the 14th second bracket so bad. We ended up qualifying 14th, and I think we ran a, a 50. 1901. So we were close, real, real close. But even that, you know, it's just a really fast. You're going fast. Things happen so fast there. And uh, you know, Bristol, you can't just ride. You know, it's a 500 lap race, and you got to take care of your equipment. But there's no place to ride. You know, I mean, there's if if you uh, if you're just cruising or you know trying to save your stuff, there's a line of 15, 20 cars behind you that that are ready to go. And so there's really um, it's just a, it's such a fast-paced race, and, and uh, it's a white-knuckle experience for, you know, three hours, three and a half hours. So when something goes wrong, it's easy to lose your pool, and, and definitely I've, uh, I've I've done my share of uh, losing my pool in the race car. But, uh, you know, it's something you don't want to do, obviously, because uh, you don't make your best decisions like that. Well, we're talking to David Gillen, and David, is there is there any two racetracks that would be a, a bigger contrast than uh, – Bristol, where you just raced, and where you're going this week at, at the Auto Club Speedway in California? No, I don't think so. I think that's uh, I think that uh, pretty much um, completes the the spectrum there from one end to the other for sure. Um, but but we're excited about going to California. You know, we uh, 
we've been much more competitive this year and at every single racetrack that we've gone to so far. And so uh, we're excited. California has been a place where we've struggled a little bit in the past. It's, you know, kind of a flatter racetrack compared to a lot of the tracks we run on and uh, two-mile tracks. got some scenes that are, are uh, fairly uh, difficult to, to deal with throughout the race. So um, it presents a, a lot of challenges, but, you know, we're excited. we got some uh, different setup, front-end geometry stuff we've been running that seems to have been really good, and I'm anxious to get out there and, and see see what we got for them. We talked to some drivers about uh, how the this new Gen 6 car was at Vegas. Obviously, didn't get a chance to talk to you about it. Was the... The car supposedly was designed kind of for these intermediate tracks. Were you uh, were you satisfied with how it was at Vegas, and do you think it's going to be good at California, or or tell us what you think about the car? Yeah, I love the car. I think, um, like I said, I don't car crew chief. There's a lot of new stuff for me this year, but uh, but but we've been way more competitive than we were last year at, at each and every race track we've gone to so far. And so uh, I'm a big fan of the new car. I think it looks fantastic. Uh, I think the, it's been putting on better races, and will only continue to get better as, as uh, everybody gets, you know, the car dialed in and, and gets up, up to speed. Um, but but I think definitely, I think Vegas was very good for us. It was probably the best we ran competitively on a mile and a half in uh, in a long time, and so we're we're looking to to build on that momentum and take it to California and, and see what we got. So hopefully we can put on a a better show than we have in the past for for all the fans out there in Southern California real close to my hometown out there. And, um, you know, the, the racetrack, you hear a lot of people complain about, oh, it's boring, it gets spread out and everything else. But, but I think this new car is going to bring a new element um, to the racing that it's been missing. And, and uh, I'm excited. I can't wait, out, wait to get out there and uh, put it to work. Hey, David, baseball players always talk about when they go back to their hometown, you know, how many uh, tickets they have to give out. You go back to your hometown, do you have a, a list of people that all of a sudden uh, are calling David Gilliland looking for tickets? Oh, yeah. We try and take care of all our friends and family out there. You know, it's uh, it's, uh, it's always great to go back and, and, and race in front of the people that, that really have helped me and, and were such a big part of my career and, and um, getting me where I'm at. So uh, I'm excited about going out there. We, we, we get a lot of the tickets and, and uh, like I said, it's exciting to get out and, and catch up with everybody and, and kind of hang out. And um, I'll probably get more rec- dinner requests. I, I, I think <laughs> I could go to dinner with all the people. It'd probably take me about 365 days to go to dinner with all the people that want to go to dinner while we're out there for three days. So um, it's uh, it, that's always the biggest challenge, I think, when I go back out there. And they're always, they're always looking to buy, though, right? Yeah, 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 for sure. We, uh, <laughs> we got a lot of. <laughs> a lot of great, uh, a lot of great friends and family out there. So um, it's always good to go home. Hey, I know that you grew up right by old Riverside. Did you ever get a chance? You're such a young guy. Did you ever get a chance to run around uh, Riverside at all in a race car or one of your dad's cars or anything? Not in a race car. I went there one time. My dad was racing, and uh, I was way too young to get in the pits. And I, I just uh, took about three quarters of a lap around the track. I remember going, standing in every corner and. And uh, hanging on the fence, just dreaming about uh, road racing someday. And turns out I'm, I'm not a bad road racer. We've got our best cup finish at Sonoma, second place. And and, um, and so that's as close as I got to, to Riverside. You know, Charlie and I are big road race fans, and, and we always talk about the fact that uh, some of the best races, and I don't know if it was just because of the, the Gen 5 car. We can call it a Gen 5 car now instead of the car tomorrow, thank God. Um some of the best races last year and the, and the year before were on road courses. Do you ever see NASCAR deciding that maybe uh, they will add another one to the cup scene? You know, I don't know. I know the uh, the Nationwide Series is running on some new road course tracks the last couple of years. And, um, you know, who, who knows? I'd be for it. I enjoy it. And um, you know, I think it uh, definitely levels the playing field a little bit and um, just kind of adds a different element to to the racing that we do each and every week. So, you know, I, I like it. I like uh, I like all the racetracks we go to, honestly. You know, you got the super speedways, intermediate short tracks, um, you know, the bank tracks, some of the flat tracks. I mean, you know, I think we've got a good variety of tracks, and, and I think, um, you know, another road course wouldn't hurt going oh, in there. Before we let you go, David, St- uh, Steve and I kind of had a little bit of a, not a debate, we were just talking about uh, maybe adding a, a short track or two to this series. 
if if there was one track that we don't race at in the Cup Series that you could add to that Cup schedule, what would it be? That's the Irwindale Speedway. You know, we uh, that yeah. was kind of my, where I cut my teeth learning how to race asphalt uh, race and racing. And after I um, you know started on dirt, kind of moved over there and. We've won a lot of races there and, and been really, really successful. I think it's a neat racetrack. I think, you know, the uh, Toyota All-Star Showdown, when, when NASCAR had it there, I think that put on an awesome show. And um, I think it's a great racetrack. It's, you can run, you know, from the from the bottom on the on the white line to the right side tires right up against the wall. So uh, it's a wide, fast, great racetrack, fun to race on. All right, David, thanks so much for spending time with us. We appreciate it. Best of luck to you as uh, the season rolls along. We'll talk to you again, I'm sure, before uh, we finish this thing all up. So thanks so much. We appreciate it. All right, thanks for having me on the show, guys. Appreciate it. All right. All right. David Gilliland.